my quick review of what it's like to travel to Greece during the month of February. Today is February 24th, 2023. As you can see, I'm sitting here in the balcony of the apartment that my family rented um, in the neighborhood that's just south of the Acropolis, which you can see right, right there. So there's the Parthenon, and the whole hill that the Parthenon sits on is called the Acropolis. So if you go down that street there, there's a way to go up and around to the entrance. Um, if you're looking for a hotel recommendation, there's the Divani Palace is on this street down here. It looks like it's a really, really, really nice hotel. However, when my wife and I were looking for hotels, we have two young kids with us. Actually, they're not that young. They're 13, 13 year old twins. Um, we were looking to get two rooms. And if you look at the uh, square footage of some of these rooms, they're like shoe boxes. They're like 165, you know, under 200 square feet. And we didn't want that. We wanted to have a fairly large place so that you know, when we were done walking around and seeing the sights, you know, we could come back and just kind of relax, kind of in an at-home type of setting, which we found. So if you are looking for a recommendation on a place to stay, uh, it's basically city living, um, as you can see. You can probably hear there's a, there's a crane around the corner there that's doing some construction at the moment. Um, we've been here for about a week and that's the first day that's the first day that I hear that crane. It's usually pretty quiet here. You hear the mopeds and motorcycles zipping up and down the street. Uh, somebody was leaning on a horn before, but that's that's city living for you. Um, you know, if you ever go to New York City, it's constant, it never stops. Uh, it is quiet here at night, and I will say that there are little cafes and shops, uh, gelato places, supermarkets, uh, you know, equivalent of a 7-Eleven right around the corner. There's a guy up the street that we can find up here that has a little souvenir shop if you want to get a beer or something there. Um, it's a great place to be. It's uh, considered central Athens, uh, very close to the edge of the tourist district, of course, because of that, of being up there. Um, so I'll tell you, one thing we were nervous about with it being February is that the weather wasn't going to be good. And as you can see, I'm in a t-shirt here uh, and I am comfortable. This is fantastic weather. Um, you know, I brought a couple of hoodies, um, which frankly, I never even really wore, uh, except maybe the first night, because I didn't know how cold it was going to get uh, when the sun went down. It gets a little chillier at night, but not too bad. Right now, it's about 65 degrees. Uh, very, very comfortable. If you're out walking around in the sun and you're wearing a dark shirt like I am right now, uh, you're probably going to be hot, which is kind of weird to be to be saying that with a, on a 65 degree day. It's funny to see the locals. It reminds me of when you go to Florida in December and the temperature drops down to like the 50s and all the Floridians are wearing, you know, their parkas and, you know, it looks like they're getting ready to hit the ski slopes with, uh, with all their gear. So when you're walking about and you see the locals wearing, uh, you know, heavy jackets and I'm walking around in a t-shirt, it's kind of funny, uh, you know, how the weather affects uh, different people differently. Um, but anyway, the point is, is we were very, very lucky. The weather, every single day that we've been here this week has been in the 60s during the day. Uh, today is the only day that I'm looking and I see wisps of clouds in the sky like, you know, you see up here. Uh, for the most part, the days have been crystal blue skies and, it, and it's been amazing. Um, some recommendations on tours and things to do. Now, with my family, we didn't really do too much in terms of tours. Um, we did do a Greek dinner with dancing and singing and everything. Um, you know, you could probably get away with finding that on your own and not having to book it through a tour. If you go to the Plaka district, which is not too far from here, about five to ten minute walk, uh, there are tons of places that have dinner, they've got people playing music, um, maybe you don't get the dancers. Um, if you want to see, you know, the Zorba the Greek type stuff happening, then you might have to book a tour or go to a place um, that has that specifically. Um, I think we overpaid for the tour, uh, which for the for the food that we got and everything. You know, we've had better dinners just kind of walking about on our own. Um, in fact, the best dinner we had was the night we were here when we got when we first got here. We were extremely jet lagged. There's a place called Greco's, not Greco's Project just called El Greco, uh, right around the corner from here. And 
we showed up and we were the only ones in the restaurant and it looked like it was a family that was running it and it was a tremendous meal best salad we had greek salad uh you know we had the pork souvlaki chicken souvlaki the uh tzatziki sauce just to die for pretty much all the tzatziki sauces that we've had at all the restaurants have, have been pretty good um, for the most part, if you start walking towards the touristy areas, it's kind of around the perimeter of the Acropolis. There's a, there's a walking path. Um, all those restaurants are going to have pretty much the exact same thing. You're going to have your, your souvlaki, pork, chicken, lamb, um, french fries, uh, the bread, the pita with the, with the tzatziki sauce. You know, they, have, they, all, they all pretty much have the same thing. It, it seems to be the trend on the menu is, is the exact, exact same things we did you know one night we were you know not to say tired of greek food but we just wanted something different and we found a italian restaurant everything was made fresh it, you know it was phenomenal the wine the, the pasta are unbelievable but we have stuck to uh, eating greek food now if you're looking for the traditional what we know stateside as the gyro which is the gyro that's in the pita that you hold and you you know have the gyro sandwich um, there's many different ways of how they order it here. Um, there's a place called Costas, uh, Costas Gyro. It's a, basically a hole in the wall where you go and you take out um, your, uh, your gyro. Now, when I walked in there and I said, I'll take three gyros uh, for my family we were gonna share, the guy corrected me. He's like, when you're in Greece and you ask for a gyro, that basically doesn't mean what you think it means. Um, it's, it's kind of like a deconstructed gyro. It's on a plate and they give you like, you know, three little slices of uh, quarter pita. And then they put the kebab meat, which is either pork or chicken on it. And then on the side, you've got your onions and your tomato uh, and whatnot. Now, if you ask for a souvlaki, like a pork souvlaki gyro, which confuses me because in, back in the States, I had known the souvlaki and the gyro as being two different things. But for whatever reason, if you're looking at it, if you want it like in a sandwich type format, they call that a souvlaki gyro. And that's at least the guy from the Costas uh, gyro place, the street food place, was explaining to me. And then I did see it uh, on a menu as I was walking over the top uh, part, excuse me, by the Acropolis uh, Museum. There's a whole bunch of places that also sell uh, gyros if you want to go sit down and not, not do the street food uh, routine. Um, we also did a day trip, or, I'm not sorry, not a day trip, we did an overnight to one of the nearby islands of Aegina. So that was easy enough. Uh, we took a ferry at the port of Piraeus. There's a tons, of, tons of little kiosks that uh, are running ferries to all the various islands. Um, we chose that one because it was close. It was only about an hour ferry ride. Uh, shorter than that, if you take the high speed, more expensive ferry. Uh, we just took the regular ferry over there. Uh, we booked this uh, rustic hotel, which I don't know the name of off the top of my head. I'll put it in, in the link uh, or in the description. Um, the two guys that ran that hotel, they were bending over backward for us uh, in terms of just their hospitality and showing us uh, places to eat and recommending some tours. So we did an overnight on the island of Aegina. We stayed at the hotel. There's a couple of, there's two or three like touristy things to do and see there. You know, there's a... Uh, there's a, a monastery and a church that's dedicated to one of the famous saints of the uh, Greek Orthodox Church on Aegina. Um, they're building a big cathedral. Uh, it's still kind of under construction there, and it's it's a sight to behold. Um, you don't need to spend more than 30, 40 minutes there uh, if that's your type of thing. Uh, there's also, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher this, but there's a temple of Atheus, I think is the name. Uh, on the island of Aegina, and um, what it is, it's actually the original, well, how do I put this? Um, so you see the, the Parthenon up there. The design of the Parthenon was taken from this temple on the island of Aegina, and it's actually a smaller version of it. Um, so there's that to see, and what's great about that is it's on the top of a, of a hill, and you just have a great view of the, of the, uh, of the ocean, or the sea, I guess would be the proper term. You can see Athens off in the distance, and it's really, really nice. And then I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but there was another site that we actually skipped, but um, the cabbie or the person that we recommended, or that was recommended to us to drive us around, 
was saying that we should go check out this area on, the, on one of the highest points of the island. It looks like way, way back in the day, folks built um, homes, you know, ancient homes around the top of this mountain. And I have to imagine the view from up there was phenomenal. I can see why they would do that. We skipped it, uh, but it's something else to do on the island of Aegina. Aegina is also known for its pistachios. So there's pistachio everything on the island. There's pistachio ice cream. We had, uh, we, we saw, emp we love empanadas, my family and I. So we ordered the empanadas uh, at, a, at a cafe when we were eating. And they were actually not the empanadas that we think of as being the, you know, the Latin empanadas. What these empanadas were, were basically chicken that were encrusted in like a pecan, uh, I don't want to say dough. It was very interesting what it was. And why am I saying pecan? I meant pistachio. Uh, and it was delicious. I mean, it was really, really, really good. So as you walk around, they've got, you know, you can buy a bunch of bags of pistachios. They got pistachio butter, which is phenomenal. You know, it's made with olive oil and it's actually kind of sweet. It's really, really good. So easy enough to get back and forth to Aegina. Um, again, like I said, this ferry is going to all the other islands. Um, I would say, you know, it's easy to do your research. Ferryhopper.com is a, is a website uh, to see, you know, what island you want to go to and how often the ferry goes and what kind of ferry uh, goes there as well. If you're looking to get around, I noticed, you know, we, we took a cabbie to Lycabettis Hill the other day. Um, and the reason we took a cab there, I mean, you could walk it, but to get to the, what they call the funacular, or which is the tram that takes you to the top of Lycabettis Hill, um, it's about a third of the way up the mountain already. So we didn't want to walk it because it would have been an uphill walk and it would have been pretty tough. So we took a cab to the, uh, to the, to the, uh, the funacular uh, station or the tram station at the base of Lycabettis Hill. I'll tell you about that more in a minute, but in terms of like getting a cab like when we, we we took a cab there it was five euro from where we were staying uh really nothing uh let me let me tell you about the cabs for just a minute so if you have the uber app i recommend you use the uber app because it controls the pricing of what you're going to pay it's all done through the app right so if you do the uber app um there's no uh, personally owned cars here that are using Uber. The Uber system is hooked up to the taxi system. So you call an Uber, it's gonna be a taxi that shows up. And you know, they'll give you the license plate number so that you, you, know, you get into the right, uh, correct taxi. And most of the taxis here are either Mercedes-Benz taxis or they're Skoda uh, taxis. They're all very nice leather seats, at least all the ones we've been in, uh, very comfortable. And all the drivers have been really, really friendly. Uh, we took one to the Port of Piraeus uh, the other day to get on the ferry. We took one on the way home from the ferry. And then we took one yesterday, as I was mentioning, to get to the uh, Lycabettis Hill tram station. So the reason I'm saying use the Uber app is because when we got off the ferry and took a, you know, I was going to pull up the, um, the uh, app, uh, the Uber app to, to get a taxi. But there was like four or five of them right there. And I said, ah, screw it. Let's just get into one of those. And I did. And the driver immediately says, where are you going? So I, you know, I showed him the address where we were going. And he looked at me, he said, okay, 25 euro. Is that okay? Well, I knew for a fact that it had only really cost me 12 euro to get to the port. So I said, hey, uh, why is it 25 to go back? And, you know, it only cost me 12 to get here the other day. And he kind of relented. He said, okay, how about 15 euro? And I said, all right, that, that works. Now, had I used the app, the Uber app, it would have been 12 euro. Plus, the reason I said okay to 15 is because you know, I give the guys two or three euro tip anyway. So just be careful with that when you, when, you, when you get a cab. The other thing you can do too is if you want to see what the, you know, the um, estimated cost is going to be, just fire up your uh, Uber app and just put in where you want to go, from, you know, from your from your current uh, location to whatever destination, and it'll give you a range of what you should expect to pay. So if you want to just jump into a cab without using the Uber app, you should have an idea of what you should be paying. So if the cabbie says, "Oh, 20 euro," but the Uber app is telling you that it should cost 12, then you negotiate down to like you know, 12, or you know, if you're gonna leave a tip or something, just say 15 total. So that's that's one tip. 
the other reason I wanted to bring this up is because the other cat, like one of the cabbies, very nice cabbie uh, that took us to like Venice Hill, gave me his card and he said, hey, if you want to hire me directly to take a tour or drive here or drive there and go to the airport, whatever, he uh, was you know, making himself available to us. Um, I can't imagine that that would be terribly expensive. And again, it's open to negotiation. Um, I had wanted to go down to Cape Sonion, I think it's called. The Temple of Poseidon is down there. We were kicking around the idea of taking a, uh, a tour uh, or going with a, uh, a small group or a personal tour. And, you know, if you just hire the cabbie, I bet you it'd probably be half the cost of what the tour, uh, the tour costs. Now, never had, a really, never had a chance to go down there. It's one thing that we just decided to forego. There's something else that we, that we had wanted to do. So we're going to be doing that instead. Um, the final thing that we're going to be doing tonight, and I wish probably should have waited to record this tomorrow, is we are taking a cooking class at someone's home to learn how to make pita and gyros. Um, they're actually picking us up, going to be taking us to their home with their family, and uh, we're going to learn how to make those gyros and pita breads. Well, pita breads, then, you know, the gyro souvlaki thing, or the gyro souvlaki, or souvlaki gyro, as I, I mentioned it before, the actual handheld uh, sandwich. So they frame it as having dinner with your long lost uh, Greek cousins. So we're kind of looking forward to that. Um, you know, I'll put that in the description on how that went and uh, maybe a link to who we used, provided it was a good experience. But that's pretty much it. I think I've spent a good 17 minutes here describing our Greece experience. We sort of threw a dart at the dartboard for our kids' winter break and we chose Greece and we booked it um, for a week. I would say if you're looking to come to Greece, don't spend a week in Athens. Uh, it's probably a little too long even with breaking it up and going to the islands for an overnight. Um, I would suggest maybe spending no more than three or four days in Athens. You can definitely hit all the sites in that time frame. And then if the weather's good, you know, pick a few of the islands to go to. Um, the big islands, you know, the islands that are well known like Mykonos or, or Santorini, you know, those are a bit of a longer ferry ride. In fact, if that's where you want to go, it's probably better to take a flight because that cuts out a lot of the, uh, of the travel time. You know, we kind of looked at this trip as a reconnaissance mission to Greece. Yeah, there goes the crane, really loud. So they're constructing something over there. We looked upon, uh, uh, upon this trip as a reconnaissance mission to Greece. I've been trying to get here for 30 years. Uh, one of my best friends from high school uh, is from a Greek family and you know always talking about how wonderful Greece is and uh, I finally made it it's definitely some place I would want to come back to the people here are incredibly sweet uh, incredibly um, you know generous and uh, what's the term I'm looking for that's on the tip of my tongue they're just very very welcoming and warm people um, yeah you know, every now and then you'll meet someone who's you know pretends that they're not happy to see you but for the most part, you know, you ask for directions or you ask for a recommendation or whatever. They're, they're really, really warm and loving people. And they want to, you know, they want to make sure that the experience you have in their country is positive. And so far, it's been fantastically positive. This is our, what, sixth or seventh day here. And um, we are really, really happy with making our choice to come here. However, as I said, you know, make sure you plan your trip carefully, uh, map it out. And like I said, probably don't need to spend more than three or four days in Athens proper. Uh, I would spend more time, you know, maybe going to the islands, which is a little less hustly and bustly. And, uh, you know, maybe some of the other things that Greece has to offer, maybe like the town of Sparta or some of the other coastal areas that, that uh, we've been told seem to be nice. The other thing that our hosts, or I should say the people that ran the hotel in Aegina were telling us is that the island of Crete is supposed to be wonderful as well. So do your YouTube searches for people who have gone to Crete and see what they have to say, because I think that that's going to be our next uh, destination. Um, we came from New York. We managed to get a direct flight out of Newark on Emirates Airways. Um, and that was uh, nine hours to get here. And I think it's going to be 11 hours to go back since we're fighting the, uh, the headwinds on the way back. But all in all, Greece has been a wonderful experience for us. I recommend it highly. I am staying at a place called the... Uh, Acropolis Plus Penthouse. It's an apartment here in this uh, neighborhood uh, of Greece. It's a three-bedroom apartment. There's two baths. It's been very, very comfortable for my wife and two kids. Lots of space. 
and I definitely recommend it. All right, I'm sure I'm missing a few things. Anything that I'm missing, I'll put in the description. But this is Greece, February 2023. Beautiful Greece weather. And there's the, uh, the Parthenon again. And I am signing off. Bye-bye. Oh, if you have any questions, certainly just reach out and put them in the comments. Beautiful. That's like a bit of snow over there. I was pointing at it. I think we're going to go check that out too. And there's the Plaka area. The city is huge. So I'm here at the theater of Dionysus, back here. You see it being partially restored. And there is the uh, Acropolis Hill with the Parthenon. You can't see it, it's behind this thing here. But I'll tell you something, if you can get here while you're young, get here while you're young. It's a lot of climbing, a lot of rocks. If you're not in good shape, you're gonna have some trouble. And yeah, therefore I had some trouble. Beautiful here. I'm just walking through the park here in Athens. I just got done checking out the uh, Panathenaic Stadium and I'm just kind of walking through the park and just kind of taking my own time. Well, you know how in New York City they don't like people doing any kind of graffiti, but here they actually um, they promote it. And if you're really good, they want you to put it up. So there's a guy right there doing graffiti on this building behind me in the park. They say it's not the gangs, it's actually kids, and they want to promote artistic ability to do that. So I don't really know the name of the park I'm in. I just kind of looked at my map on the phone, and I know this is the way to go to where they do the changing of the guard. <laughs> I've been walking a lot today, so Christine and the kids stayed back at the apartment after we spent all morning going to the uh, Acropolis and the Parthenon and the Acropolis Museum. I think if I looked at my watch, it's gonna say that I've probably walked about six or seven miles. So, but anyway, it's a beautiful day. I mean, I thought we were gonna have to be wearing winter jackets here. It's February in Athens, Greece, and it's in the 60s right now. And um, I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful city. Um, been literally killed with kindness with anybody I've ever anybody I've interacted with here. Um, the other night we were walking by a little convenience store, and I asked the guy, "Hey, do you have ice cream?" And he said, "No." But he goes, "Let me show you where there is actually some really good ice cream." And he left his store unattended and walked about half a block with us to show us where to go to get ice cream. So needless to say, we went back and uh, made sure that we bought some stuff from him because he was a very nice guy. Pretty much that's the way it is with everybody. And I'm sorry I'm breathing heavy, man. I'm walking a lot today, but it feels good. So even though I'm exhausted, I'm excited to see what else there is. Now, I just kind of came out into a square here. Uh, like I said, I should, I should probably know what this building is. But it's the Zapion. Pretty cool. Uh, Athens reminds me a lot of 
roam. You can't walk, you know, 10 feet without hitting something of historical, historical significance. It's amazing. I highly recommend coming here. And as I'm probably gonna say, either in a video you've already heard or one that you're gonna hear, come here as a younger person. Because there is an awful lot of walking to do. And it gets to the point where if you're just not able to anymore, you're not going to enjoy it. So come to Athens while you still can and while you can enjoy it. Because it is beautiful and it's got a lot to offer. And again, I've only been here for two days. So maybe uh, in another two days I'll have a different perspective. But so far, so good. Really enjoy it. And I can't say anything bad so far. The food has been delicious. You know, we went a little bit, we kind of OD'd on some Greek food initially. And then last night we felt like getting some Italian. <laughs> Italian was delicious too, you know I mean? You really couldn't go wrong. So anyway, I'm gonna try to figure out where I'm at and try to find this changing of the guard uh, thing. I think it's over at something called, um, oh boy, right on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, in the next video, I'll tell you what it is. Okay, what I couldn't remember before was Syntagma Square. And this is the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers, just like we have at Arlington Cemetery in Washington, except they have their own here in Athens, Greece. And they do have a changing of the guard. I just don't know when that is. And then there's another square across the street, which I get is part of the Syntagma Square area down over here. It's back there. I'm gonna go over there in a minute. I'm gonna hang out here for a few minutes to see if there's a changing of the guard ceremony. Let's see what the deal is. Let's see if these guys will do it. I'm gonna go online and check the schedule. Oh man, I'm having trouble remembering things. I saw the sign as soon as I walked in. Temp Temple of Aphius, Aphius. And this apparently was here before the Parthenon on the top of the Acropolis in Athens. So they used this as the model. So we call this the mini Parthenon back here. And check out this view over here. 
You see Athens way in the distance over here. I don't know if you can make it out. It's a beautiful spot here. Been just relaxing on the island for an overnight. Just went to go visit a sacred church that honors a saint of the Greek Orthodox Church. And then we're just going to head back to Athens in the afternoon today. Beautiful ocean. Let's go check out some of these ruins.